Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I'm going to be starting up a new video series called Critique Time. And it is exactly what it sounds like. A lot of the questions and comments I get from people are asking me to critique their artwork and stuff like that. Uh, but I always found that one of the best ways to learn was not just by getting critiques on your own work, but also by reading and listening to critiques on other people's work. Uh, so this way I'll be able to kind of critique people's work, but I'll be able to do it in video format so everyone can kind of see and learn from anything that I might notice, as well as, you know, give their own critiques if they have any ideas. So it should be fun and it should be more of a community vibe. So I think I'm going to try to do this once a month, uh, probably sometime in the middle of the month. Um, and I'm just going to give a couple rules for submitting something. And I just want you guys to submit stuff like in the comments section of whatever the latest video is. Uh, but it would be very helpful if however you present your artwork and probably just like a single piece of artwork uh, to be critiqued is if you do it in 1280 by 720 uh, resolution. And that's just because that's the video size I use. So it'll make it a lot easier for me to just quickly pull up a, you know, a slide of your artwork and be able to talk about it or paint over it or do whatever. Uh, so 1280 by 720. And I also think you should use uh, Mgur, I don't, I don't know how to say the name, but imgur.com for kind of uploading stuff just to keep things centralized. And in order to do that in a YouTube comment, you're going to have to put a space uh, in between the imgur and the .com. Uh, probably after that second dot, you might have to put one after the first dot. Do uh, but just a, a space or two will get you to pass the YouTube filter, and you, I'm sure they'll give you your own. Uh, URL address. It won't be buds.jpg. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I think that's about everything. Um, and oh yeah, don't forget to put your name on it. That would also be helpful and save me a lot of editing time. Uh, so put your name on it, 1280 by 720. Just display whatever kind of chunk of your art, or you could try to put a couple things on the image, but you know, just something general that you want critiqued. And uh, this is going to be the first video for you to submit stuff to. So this is just kind of a pre-warm-up video uh, where you guys can give me some stuff. And probably in a couple weeks, I'll do the first actual episode of Critique Time. And that should be a lot of fun. But for now, I actually do have something to critique. Uh, so I'm going to jump into a example. So Jonathan Ray on Twitter asked me for some art advice and I suggested that he do a photo ref practice um, and he was nice enough not only to do it but to agree to let me critique it on video so thanks to him. Now there's a couple main critiques I want to talk about. Uh, one of them has more to do with rendering but the first thing I want to talk about is more on how we select colors. So I want you to look at the eye area in particular right now and you'll notice he has those strong whites in the eyes, in the whites of the eyes, which itself is a kind of misleading name to the art world. Um, but if I go ahead and make this negative, it'll really highlight the point I'm trying to make. And that is that in the photo, there is no kind of strong value change in the eyes. Uh, yet in the painting he did, you'll see how the whites of the eyes stick out completely um, in those black dots. So this all highlights a very common mistake I see, and that's in picking our colors iconically in the way that we think they should be rather than the way that they actually are. And I talked about this kind of concept a lot when I was talking about drawing like a painter and the way we draw and stuff, but it also applies to the way we pick colors. Because when we think about an eye, we're gonna think, okay, it's got white on the sides, you know, whites of the eyes. So anytime I go to select a color when I'm rendering eyes, I should start with white. Uh, but in fact, that's very misleading because oftentimes when we're looking at a picture or an image or just, you know, anytime we're looking at someone in real life, the, the color of their eyes is not white at all. It's generally, you know, somewhere in the mid-tone area. So I'm going to do a paint over of this image and don't expect me to do a paint over of every image you guys want critiqued, but I figured that would be a good example to highlight some of these common kind of mistakes and things like that. Um, so I'm just going to quickly kind of mess with the background a little bit just to get it uh, more comfortable for me. And you'll see that gray at the top. 
And if you look at the image, and if you blur your eyes enough at the image, you'll notice that it's not actually gray. It's more of like a yellowish, warmish, warmish tone. And I think gray is definitely one of those colors that throws our eyes off the most. Um, it's always kind of very confusing. If gray is next to a warm color, it looks cold. And if a cold color is next to a warm color, it looks gray. And you know, there's just a lot of kind of mental things that it messes with. And the other first initial thing I did on this image was I got rid of that white at the bottom. And that's just because uh, white will just throw my eye off. It's difficult to paint colors when you got white kind of staring back at you. So it's helpful not to work on a white canvas in general. Uh, but anyway, here you can see I'm messing with the forehead area, just kind of doing some reshaping. And I will say that he did a good job in general of just kind of blending colors together. He, he brought in some red tones on one side and some non-red tones on the other side. And, you know, they're kind of soft and subtle in how they change uh, hues. So that was good on his part. But I do want to mention some of the changes I've been making. You may notice the ear on the right side is completely gone, and I'm not going to keep it like that. Uh, but the value of it was just way too light the way it was. So I figured I'd just get rid of it and come back to it later with like a darker tone. Um, so here you can see I'm actually finally changing the eyes. And I just started with something really basic. I'm focusing on like chunks of color and value instead of thinking about drawing an eye. So I just do a chunk, you know, those dark values that I see in the photo. And I just kind of made those lines there. And then I'm just gonna slowly detail things as I move along. Uh, but the nose, like the ear, was one thing that was really bugging me. It was just way too light. Um, and I think that just comes from approaching all skin tones. Um, like at the same time, maybe you draw like a base skin tone and then you think every like different chunk of the face or chunk of skin is going to work with the same highlights and shadows and lowlights. But you really have to stop thinking about the face and just kind of look at the photo and approach it as chunks of color and value in different sections. Because uh, that will really help a lot. The, the less you view things as a face and of something that you think you understand, the better your art will look. So you might even try doing weird things like flipping the photo upside down when you do a photo ref, just to kind of get it out of your head that you're looking at something, you know, in the way you think it should be. Uh, just kind of doing weird stuff like that is somewhat interesting. It can be a helpful experience. Uh, but anyway, I'm just kind of slowly rendering things out. And the main thing I want to talk about with rendering is just kind of doing things really blockily. Blockily? It sounds like a horrible vegetable, but no. Uh, things like in chunks of color rather than thinking about them, you know, in more uh, defined ways. And that especially comes in handy with things like hair. So you may notice like the hair and the mustache and the beard. And the way he did them is like very much uh, focused on drawing individual strands of hair and thin lines everywhere. Uh, but I don't want you to think about things like hair as if they're hair. I want you to think about just chunks of color that you see when you're looking at the photo. Um, so you can see the way I did it. I just kind of made a, you know, a, a chunk of dark value for the hair and then I brought in a chunk of lighter value for the, for the highlights on the hair. Like the highlights that I see when I look at the photo and blur my eyes. Those are the only things I care about. And if I wanted to get back in there and make it more photo photo realistic then I just take what I've done and I go in there and I start filling in smaller chunks and getting more details but I never want to think about it like you know hair and I got to draw individual strands of hair because that will just make it look awkward and it will also take longer and it just won't help you learn as much about values and colors and things like that. So here you can see I'm working on the mouth and once again it was just a bit light and you can see I completely changed around some of the values on the lower half of the face. I brought in you know the the greener tones and the things that make it look more stubbly and the natural way that colors of the face change from the top to the bottom, especially on a male uh, with stubble and things like that. And just places where hair grows, you get them slightly grayer tones, desaturated values and stuff like that. And you could see them in the photo, although it's like subtle and your eyes really aren't trained to view things like that. Uh, but if I look at the photo, I definitely see grayer tones, you know, near the bottom of the face. And 
warmer tones near the top. So I exaggerate them maybe slightly, but not too much. You know, I think it's still pretty accurate in the way I'm kind of rendering it. So I think at this point I've established a good basis for skin tones and I can go back and start messing with other things. I can add the ear back in now that I have some darker skin values to work with and I can just kind of color pick and do it real quickly. And once again, I'm not thinking about it as an ear, but I'm thinking about it just as the little chunk of color that I see when I look at the photo. Now, since this is just a paint over and I didn't want to restart from nothing, um, it's not going to be completely accurate. And there are things that I probably would have changed, such as the nose placement. I think it's a, it's a little off in the, in the painting he did. But for the most part, he was pretty close with all of his proportions and everything. So I think that's about it for this critique. And hopefully it was interesting. I'm glad I got to talk a bit more about, you know, the difference between drawing things iconically versus drawing them perceptively. And uh, for now, I'll just be showing some before and after shots of what I did with the paint over. I think that's about it for now. So once again, I'll remind you guys, if you would like something critique, just leave it in the comments section for the video. And I might not be able to get to everything. And I might not have something to say about each piece. Uh, but for the most part, I will try to get to as much stuff as I can. And that video should be up in a couple weeks. So you don't have any rush. You have a couple weeks to get something in the comment section. But anyway, thanks for watching.